Let me see. I'm just going to pop it there. Not, am I in the video? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, we've got to edit you out, haven't I? Okay, don't worry. I'll get that sorted. Right. Hey, yep. Right, so this is a video from Hege Windmill. I can't remember the exact date, so I'll pop it on screen. Now. Bing. Right, so uh, me and Paulie went to a show in Hege Windmill in Derbyshire earlier this year. It was a classic bike show and um, it was a brilliant day there was so many cool bikes so much there and I did actually record a video but uh, Calamity Quinn is as Calamity Quinn does um, I messed up the audio recording there you go I've admitted it it is what it is so I've met up with Paulie who's generously come out again here I am I am here Paulie in the flesh and we are going to do the voice for this video so uh, let's get on with it right so we start off with a scene over the hills of Derbyshire. Let's just... Yep. It's a really nice view from the Hege Windmill. I really like the place. I think that's overlooking... Uh, is it? It's not Belper, is it? It's, uh, it's some sort of civilization. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. So this is the Stone Windmill, um, where everyone from the area would have come in the past, uh, bought their grain for it to be made into flour. Um, they've actually made it like a little um, museum. Heritage, heritage site, isn't it now? Yeah, I think it's got like a museum inside, hasn't it? So they can go inside, see loads of things. Here we go, the history of Hege Windmill. The best place to go and see it. And this is one of the tour guides that's just gone past. And so this sort of covers everything about it when it was created. So if you have a look at the bottom, it was created what, in 1790. And uh, it's been in constant use until probably just before the war. Um, when everything changed. I'm so, sure you remember when it was built, don't you? 1790. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> so you've got someone else there at the door, that, one of the tour guides, so they'll sort of take you in, show you the whole process for how windmill works. So even for kids and things, it's a nice time out. Oh, we, well, we come to the meat and potatoes over here. Trotters Independent Traders. <laughs> not the original, of course. It's um, a mock-up. It was not bad though, it had the uh, it had all the little Easter eggs in it. And even had the parking ticket as well on the windshield. Yeah, I thought that was just funny. It, it was, I think it's nice just to have something a bit different to sort of break it up. That's a nice BSA, isn't it? A nice old school Kawasaki. It's about 350. Oh, sidecar! We all love sidecars. <laughs> it's actually worth noting as well that Robin Reliant was there to raise money. So you're probably thinking it's not a motorbike, but you could drive them on motorbike licenses back in the day, so. Oh yeah, yeah, because, um, there's something the, mine, three the miners used to buy them, didn't they? Yeah, I think uh, it's from 16, you can have it on a three-wheeler. So on my license, I can ride um, anything with three wheels. And it actually says three in the part where it says about the motorcycle license. Um, yeah, but Sidecar is really beautiful. Oh, I've forgotten the name of the company now. I think it's the UK, British based company. Matchless there in front of us. Yeah, it's uh, definitely British. There's all, all the Harley Davidson here. I don't know what year it is. Maybe Western Super Motor Vlogs are about uh, indulgers, but it's old. Oh, what's this? What do they really call those seats? Bone shakers, one where they don't have any suspension. Is that what they call um, Is it a hardtail or something? I don't know what hard is at all. But... There we go. Uh, if uh, someone could enlighten us in the comments, it would be much appreciated. It just certainly looks like hard. Flipping out, give you a bad buck that well. No, yeah. I've got problems with my hands in my, in my carpal tunnel. Yeah, we don't <laughs> want we don't want an even more uncomfortable bike. Here, we, it looks like we've got some old Ducatis as well. With the oh. racing fairing. Oh, that, that red one there. Is that the one? No, no, I was thinking of a different one. Yo, oh, yeah. And they've got some really, really nice bikes. Oh, I've got one of my dream garage bikes coming up now. Got it. Uh, What's that, a Honda DeVille? Uh, <laughs> well, it's... it's uh, Amazing something about it, it's a Vincent. I've always wanted to ride a Vincent, it's one of my dreams of mine. It's, I don't know, it's I think it's something so iconic, something just so historic important. Um, it's uh, a bike that a lot of people, I think, could dream of having. Yeah, I mean, when you look at it, you just think it just looks like another bike, but then the history of it is the thing for me, especially like, um, it's the original super bike, isn't it? It's, um, it's the bike that just got a bit nuts sort of setting things off. 
you go queue for the burger van you can't go anywhere without a queue for a burger van right I'm munching on my chips you did have to make your way through crowd in some places as well it was a bit busy uh, but we've got an old rd i think it looks like an rd 350 old c right in front of us that had been completely redone all had a lot of aftermarket parts on it everything were polished and and done nicely I don't mean a little bit polished, seriously polished. There wasn't a single speck on it. Yeah, this was definitely... I, I even went and checked just because uh, it always have like gunk under the, um, um, just behind these speedos. Not this one now. No, not in a single fly. It's incredible. It even clutch. had a see-through clutch cover, um, which you don't often get with these, uh, well, any wet clutch bike, I guess. You don't see it very often at all. Well, that BSA is nice behind it as well. But like the thing for me is that I've got a special space for the RDs. Yeah, it's, the just, -stroke, it's, it's much more down my street. This is uh, the Amateur, but the old bikes are nice. But this, this, this is where it's at. Proper street bike. You know, I've always actually wanted to ride one, but I've never actually got around to it. Um, like I said, when I was growing up, Uncle had an RD 350, um, so I can remember like riding around on that. But you would never let anyone near it to touch it. He loved that bike to bits. We're getting attacked by ants as well right now. Jesus, um, oh, I've got them all in my bag now. I think we picked a dodgy, <laughs> dodgy spot to sit here. It's all right though. We'll we'll persevere through the ant invasion because we overlook um, all the bikes in front of EEG. It's actually an area that you can actually pull up off the road and just uh, stop at. Um, here we've got a general. It looks like oh, it's a general even down here. Yeah, it? it's actually uh, we're at MFN right now doing this voiceover to try and capture the atmosphere of a bike meet. Um, and the, the general lead that's a bit to the left right now is actually just in front of us. Yeah, it's actually just in front of us, and it's. Uh, I'm, I bet we'll go back round to it if we don't. Just take our word for it. It's a cool bike. Oh, tell them about the, the disc brakes. <laughs> yeah, the disc brakes are like 16 inch, as big as the rim of the of the wheel bolted to the wheel directly there it is on the end you can see it's mud guard um, that's some just nuts it's hard to remember what we recorded the, on the day here it is look you've yeah. got the turbo charger oh, look, look, on look just down the window the entire yeah the discs are carbon. as big as the rim bolted to it directly it's got a turbo charger we're, yeah. we're flipping it massive air filter on it it's uh, certainly had some money spent on it looks like a straight line bike it had a lot of steering dampeners on it uh, we've got a good view of uh, a couple of chaps looking at um, some old Suzuki Katana it looks like here. This was the problem is uh, trying to get past the bikes and the people to look at them all because it was so busy. And the Burger Van queue. Yeah, and the Burger Van queue. <laughs> but so it was a bit of a, I think the spot was just a bit of a um, congestion spot. But apart from that, I don't think it was two Burger Vans together. I think that's an old Russian bike, isn't it? Which that one? orange one. Oh, this is, this is the fire engine one. Oh yeah, these old ones, yeah. That was so cool. I, this one is, it was a fire engine bike, fire engine themed bike, and I have to say it was it was really, really nice. I really liked it. Um, it's an old Indian there as well. It had like been br brush painted with that bright red fire paint, yeah. like fire engine red paint. And it had loads of little things all over it just to sort of carry on the fire engine sort of theme. Mm. I mean, even look at the front. Um, it had a little, like, little helmet on it. So that was dead good. So I thought that was really interesting. More importantly, in the background, we've got a Nissan Micra pickup truck conversion, which is absolutely spectacular. That, I thought, <laughs> so many things that you just see all this good You just see stuff. some right weird stuff you do. Absolutely weird stuff. There's some old Lambretta there, it looks like. But I think that little Micra conversion looks like quite a good laugh, actually. I mean, if you've got something that's that cheap, no, why not? At least chuck a little shopping in that you like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there was just all sorts of old bikes. It would be impossible to name them all. Um, yeah. But if you could think of a bike, it was probably at this meet, or at least a brand. I mean, there was some I'd not even heard of. Um, and then you had some of the race bikes as well here. Where... That's an old matchless, yeah. Yeah, that's an old matchless. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it was really interesting, like, especially in these shows, because I'm quite new to all this. So it's been really interesting for me to sort of go to these sort of places. And um, a lot of times, I think, as in, as someone, as a non-biker, I think, if you're looking in, you come to these sort of things and thinking, well, I'm not too sure it doesn't look like a... You've got these people with these giant leather jackets and stickers <laughs> all over it. And they all look a bit dodgy, you know, but... No offence to anyone, but... <laughs> but when you actually go and you start meeting people, everyone's, like, really lovely, everyone's, like, really quite... Yeah, you could stand and talk to them all day, couldn't you? Yeah, And yeah. there was even someone with an old Trans Alp that you got talking to. Yeah, he's actually just uh, sold it on Facebook. I saw it coming up. Um, so I was going to... 
send him a message, come and have a look. But then he's already put it on Facebook for sale, so um, I, I did was considering having a look. But then in the end, oh, for sidecar again. <laughs> Sorry, I've been uh, distracted. Is it an old Beamer? Yeah. Yeah, it's not? An, it looks like an R100. This one does. Yeah, it's quite a popular vehicle to uh, convert to a sidecar, and actually, it's still popular today. Sidecar racing with the BMW R100. Um, very, very. I mean, they've got about 100 brake horsepower. I mean, I've I've seen one of these on the back back two wheels. These sidecar Beamers. Really? Yeah, yeah. They've got what? some power. That was up the mountain at Cadwell. Wasn't it? Didn't have the canopy over it or all, all that stuff. It was more of a race sidecar, but I've seen it happen. Oh jeez. <laughs> you know, as I said, it's um, even going to these places. I learn a lot. We've got the blood bikers, the local blood bikers. Or the Ross Hello. That you see a lot at these sorts of meets. Well, I think it's always good to go and meet. Oh, another RD350. Yeah, the Mars Bar RD350, completely bog standard, it looks like. Might have an aftermarket cannon, that's about it. I think the uh, smartphone mount on the handlebars spoils the 80s look, but maybe you could have put your Walkman in it or something back in the day. Actually, I think that'd be something really, really good to see. If you went along and yet you saw like someone with a cassette player. <laughs> <laughs> My dad did it. This is a famous story of the old Paulie Senior. Did actually fit speakers to his TDR 250 in the fairings, so he could have his his Walkman playing, listening to his tunes. Huh. Why do we do that again? We go get the old cassette player. Right? <laughs> We're stuck with them. Um, Bit outdated now, I think. I think after 15 minutes, I get chewed my tape, and I'll be done. A Jawa here. Yeah. This is a. Isn't this an Eastern European brand? No, Jawa. If, if from memory says correct, it, it's in. Um, it's an Asian brand. Is it really? Yeah, I think if it if a keep mind, I think because I know I've seen the Java in India before. I just know them as the little creatures out of Star Wars. I do. <laughs> That's J Java Box, I think. <laughs> Java Box. <laughs> here we are going to the back area, the, uh, the field, and these I've got. I, c I could actually fill us in on these because I know a bit about them. These are either Armstrong or Harley Davidson MT350 slash 500s, and there was I think there was used in the army. Up until quite recently, and you've got the uh, the fuel cases on the sides, and the uh, and the uh, 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 what's it called, the sheath for your uh, rifle on the back. Harley Davidson, you? Yeah. yeah, these are the Harley Davidson MTs. I don't know what engine size they are because they look identical from the outside, but they're basically um, they was made by Armstrong originally, and then uh, Harley Davidson bought the rights to to carry on building them. From what I'm led to believe, and you can actually still buy them today, ex army. Mm. For a couple of thousand pound. Are they any good? Well, they must have been good if the army used them. Um, Isn't that drum brakes at the back? Oh, probably, yeah. It would be back to basics motorbike in this world. Be bare minimum electrics and uh, bare minimum everything else. It would just be a single cylinder thumper that goes all day. Here we've got the like the main parking area, wasn't it? If you remember, it was. Uh, you got a bit of everything here. Oh, one uh, sec, we just paused. We've got to skip <laughs> to the next video. I'm sure we'll have some sort of transition to the next part of the video. <laughs> several, like the several moments later. <laughs> yeah, we, we need the Jeopardy music playing right now. We'll keep it in, we'll keep it in. It's alright. There, there's a good bike, there's a good classic bike in front of us. This looks like uh, someone who really knows, has good taste in motorcycles. This is, uh, of course, the Honda DeVille 650 from the Pauly Channel. Absolutely fantastic motorcycle right here. Modern and future classic. I've got to say, I really like the seat. That's one of the things I've really been doing now. My bum likes the seat as well, it's lovely. Yeah, I mean, even with the little stitching and repairs, I think that's really... Oh, that's standard. That's how Honda did them from the factory, that is. Um, yeah, definitely standard, modif uh, not not modified at all uh, from Paulie's um, slight wobble, wobbly moment. Yeah, um, you're going to do a decent repair, why not? Oh, one sec. So this is overlooking the parking area. Um, if you was there early enough, this is where you could have parked. Uh, right. This is the main parking area for the visitors of the day. So you've got a bit of everything here. So you can, as you can see, you've got a CRF and then look, surrounded by all sorts of old classics. We've got a Yamaha RTT. I think the 500cc's oh. these are. Well, that's really nice. Absolutely. Why can't they make bikes like that today? Because, yeah, I mean, probably because they cost too much money to make. <laughs> but the thing is that people would look Collectible. a lightweight off-road 500cc bike. And that, and you just got like, look, like you got the Himalayan there. And you know I mean, there's bikes you can get in the back, like bikes you can get in the past that you just can't get today. Things like a DLZ 400. Ooh, RD 250. Yeah, an old LC uh, 250 here uh, in the uh, Bounty colour scheme. We've had 
bit of everything for RDs today. Mm. <clears throat> Himalayan, another popular bike, not an old bike, but... It's quite well done. There's Paulie with his big camera. Oh, is that matchless there? No. Like, like we said, uh, you just got a bit of everything sort of thing in these. Oh, H H R D and everything. Which brands that? And brands that you've obviously never heard of. Mm. But that's the good thing about going to these. You learn so much. This is the old Trans Alp that Ooh, we. Oh, uh, it's a six hundred. Yeah, we, we met the owner of this. Yeah, I'd actually tell you, um, the six hundred is generally considered one of the best versions of Trans Alp. Um, it's got less of a range, but um, than the six fifty and the seven hundred. But uh, the handling is considered generally su way superior. Um, it's a really, really, really nice handling bike. It's uh, nowhere near as top heavy as the 650. Um, coming on to being a classic as well, now. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's considered one of the best of the Trans Alps. Everyone, everyone thinks Trans Alps a bit of a do everything. The reputation came from the 600. Um, and right, it is. We just walked down, uh, past a, a, like a Barry Sheen Suzuki as well. Old school 70s sort of bike. Was that a. That's a scooter, that is. <laughs> ADV 350. I think they're only about, well, I think it's only about five grand, six grand. I was going to say, as much as these don't appeal to me, X to Rider did um, sing the praises, didn't they? Yeah, he did these. a really, really good review. Check out X to Rider's channel. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe. Right, we've we got go. some uh, Quadrophenia action right here. Oh, is that, three, uh, that ain't that old three wheel car? Oh, we've got, we're going on to missing. That's sticking. the kind of top box that we need on our bike to keep all the. All the uh, ice cream in. Yeah. Absolutely gigantic thing on like a C50 or C90. Oh, you mean that suitcase? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you get some, the kitchen sink in that. Get a trunk, maybe. It's all trunk. I think it's generally sometimes you just think, oh, I'd love to have a trunk. There, there's some modifications that were done. I think it was um, in um, Elizabeth Beard and Air Trip. She did like a massive uh, um, custom top box, I think on her R R80. Mm. And it was basically took out the back seat um, the pannier place, the top box, was one giant box. Oh, this bike was, this one's really interesting. Yeah, it had external valves, I think, was yeah, it? Yeah, and there's no reverse on it. And so, because I remember. Yeah, when, there were about four people pushing it into place. Yeah, they had to like, pick it up and turn around. <laughs> that was dead funny. It looks like a T120 just pulled out. Was it a Thruxton or something? Oh, that huge windmill there looks really nice. It's a really nice, it's, nice Yeah, place. it's a fantastic place to go if you're in the Dobbs sort of area. You can just, like we say, pull up to this um, this field here. You can drive up the road like that guy in the white helmet is in the background and go all the way up to within pretty much six feet of the windmill. And it's one of the last traditional windmills still standing. That's the thing is, what really is, it really have a lot of interest and fun in Derbyshire. There's so many things to see. Um, and so many, so much history there as well. So it's always intriguing to know the place where you live and all these places that you see and how they've actually shaped the countryside. Um, all the farming, all the grain, all the other production place. I think we've looped to a background to the beginning of this one again. Yeah. Um, yep, so, well, that's it. I think we've had them. We'll but tie it together here. Yeah. yeah. Well, I really enjoyed it. I really had a, a nice time. There's so many really cool bikes and things to see. Uh, what did you think? Well, with it being such a local place to go, it was it was a bit of a no-brainer to go. I've been, I've never actually been to one of these Eid Windmill meets, but they do all sorts of events mm. quite frequently for all sorts. They, they do a lot of uh, car stuff as well, like mm. Ford, classic Ford or classic Chevy. I think there was a, Ford, a bike <clears throat> and a um, car meet the week before, the week after. Well, more importantly, they do classic tractor meets as well, and, and that's that's ah. where it's at. I mean. Don't get oh, wrong. and there you go. You, you, you've slam dunked the whole thing. Yeah, slam dunked the old video in this. Uh, you should go to the track to meet. Yeah, you're done. But yeah, with it <laughs> with it being such a good location, on way to Matlock, um, and the old all these events, it's definitely something worth considering going to. Oh, definitely. Um, well, but yeah. On that note, uh, I think we're about done. Well, thanks for watching. Really appreciate. Um, hope we've shown you a couple of bikes that you might uh, you wanted to see. Um, if you get a chance in the future, check out Heach Mineral. They have an event every year. All right, so uh, thank you, Paulie, for coming. It's uh, all right. Really you never it. know. In about 20 years' time, you, these meets might be full of under the Vills, So, And I'll uh, be there with me uh, grey beard. To, uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. It's really appreciated. Uh, take care, ride safe, and stay curious. Ta-ta.